Hi everyone, my name is Chelsea, a Seattle-based developer and designer. This is the second screencast for Unit 1 of Learn HTML. We will be learning about linking and how to properly set up an HTML document. Most of what I discuss will be covered in the HTML document standards lesson. This video is really meant to reinforce and build some context around the ideas presented in that curriculum. Before we begin, I just wanted to run through these learning goals quickly. The main aim here is that by the end of this video, we will be able to set up an HTML document that uses correct relative paths and properly links to pages and page anchors. Let's go ahead and take a look at the page we'll be working with. If you watched the last video on HTML structure, you may remember this project. When I look at the HTML for this project, I notice right away that we are missing some pretty important pieces. I'll just go ahead and add those in now. The first thing we're going to want to include here is a doc type declaration. This should always be the first line in our HTML document. This line ensures that browsers will parse our HTML in a more predictable, uniform way. Basically, this line just says that this document is written in modern HTML5. If this line is omitted or incorrectly added, then browsers will interpret the document as if it were written in an older version of HTML before the language was standardized. It's interesting to realize that HTML is the oldest language on the web and there are still lots of different versions of it in, out in the wild today. Here is the world's very first web page. It was created by Tim Berners-Lee in the early 90s and it's written in a proto-HTML language. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool that, we, that this can still be viewed today and I'll go ahead and throw this in resources for those of you who are curious. Let's jump back into our project now. Next we are going to want to include the HTML element. We want this to be the root of our document, so I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste our body element into these tags. Another direct child to our root element should always be the head element. Unlike the body element, which contains elements which actually get displayed to the screen, the head tag contains metadata about our page. Metadata is data about data, and it will not show up on the page itself. For a specific example, we can think of our HTML document as data, and since a page should have some guiding topic or theme, we can give this data a title. In other words, we can use data to name data. We can do this with the title tag. The content of this tag will show up in the title part of, of our page. So let me save this, and when I go back to our page, pay attention to this title bar up here. When I refresh, we see our title. It's important to note that this title will also appear in search results and bookmark lists. It allows search engines to determine what a page is about and it influences how well a page ranks in search results. For example, here is a webcomic which inspired much of the content for this project. If we look at the source code for this page, we can see uh, this is the title that they were using in the, in the head of their document. Now if I do a quick Google search for how much do cats kill, we see that this title shows up and this page ranks pretty highly. Several studies seem to suggest that readers make snap judgments based on titles and headings, so this text can be a deciding factor influencing whether or not a user visits your site. Since this piece of metadata is so important for site traffic, we want to give it some thought. A good title is neither too long nor too short. In other words, the title should be long enough to adequately capture the gist of a page, but as window tabs are limited in length, we don't want to go overboard here. According to W3C, ideally our title should be under 64 characters in length. More descriptive titles can be stuffed into the content of our H1 tags if necessary. You may remember that we also worked on this second page. Uh, now that we have learned how to properly set up an HTML document with our doc type declaration and our metadata, let's go ahead and run through this entire process again with this with this other page. So let's open up the HTML for that. Remember that the first thing we need, the very first line of code, should be our doc, doc type declaration. Next, we're going to want to include an HTML tag as the root of our document. The first direct child in our root element should be the head, and within the head we are going to want to include a short but descriptive title. And the second direct child within our root element should be the body element, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut and paste this element in. Now I just want to go ahead and save, and let's go back to our page to 
make sure that the title shows up in this tab up here. And when I refresh, uh, we see that that information changes. Next, we're going to want this page to link back to our main page with the scheduling info. Uh, so we're going to want this LI element to be an anchor. So we see that LI element here, and you might be tempted to wrap this entire line in anchor tags. However, that would be invalid HTML. The only valid direct child to a UL or an OL element is the LI element. So to create our, our site navigation, I'm just going to enclose this text itself within an anchor. So let me just cut and paste that text in. As far as the href value itself is concerned, we need to use a path that points to this index.html file. The path or address to this file can be created relative to the root folder of our project with this syntax. This dot forward slash syntax refers to our current working directory. In this case, that's HTML. If we omit this dot forward slash it'll be assumed. So this path is the same as this path. Now if I just go ahead and save this and navigate back to our page, and I refresh the page we see that this this uh, styling has changed and if I click on it it takes us back to our main page. I'm also going to want this page to link back to our frequently asked questions page. So let me open up that index.html file again and uh, I think at the top of at the top of the body element I am going to go ahead and create a nav element and within that nav element I'm gonna want a UL element and of course the only valid direct child of a UL element is an LI element and within the LI element we're gonna have an anchor again I'm gonna to want to create a relative path to my root project folder uh, that's a path relative to this HTML folder up here. So I'm going to use the dot forward slash notation, uh, even though it's not entirely necessary, just that way you become familiar with it. And if you do decide to use this syntax, just be sure that you remember to include the dot before the forward slash, uh, as that's important. And let's go ahead and give the anchor some content. So now let me just go ahead and save this and so I can navigate back to our project. And when I refresh, when I click on this navigation, oh, it's not working, so let's go back into the text editor to see what's going on. Okay, it looks like I used uh, the incorrect relative path here. We're trying, we're in index.html right now, and we're actually trying to link to the frequently asked question page to this, to this file here. Okay, so now if I save this and navigate back and refresh, with, uh, with those changes in place, I can now jump between our two pages. Another way we can use the anchor tag is to link to different parts of our page. So for example, I want this attack magic list item to link to this image of magic. And similarly, I want this attack jinx list item to link to this image of jinx. In the last screencast, you were briefly introduced to the ID attribute. One reason we may want to uniquely identify an element is for this type of page linking. Basically, we want to use ID attributes to uniquely identify our images so that way uh, our, our anchor elements can target them and scroll to the correct area of the page. So I'm just going to go ahead and give this, this image an ID attribute with a value of jinx. And I'm also going to give this image an ID attribute with a, val with a value of magic. And now we just need to go ahead and create our hyperlinks. When creating page anchors like this that target ID attributes, it's important for us to remember this 
this hash sign in our href value. And I want to do a similar thing uh, with this list item down here. Just going to turn it into a hyperlink. Now let me save and go back to our page so we can make sure that this is working. And when I click on this link, it scrolls the page to our image of magic and the same thing happens when I click on attack jinx. It scrolls the page back up so that way we can see the image of jinx. So at this point we've seen how we can use the anchor tag to link internally either to another page on our site or to a specific section of the page. One of the most fundamental and important aspects of the web is that we can link from one document to a totally separate external document. You can probably guess that to do this type of external linking, we are again going to make use of our anchor tag. So for example, I want us to link to this webcomic. This webcomic is stored on a totally separate computer from my own project. To link to this page, I'm going to nest a anchor tag within this H2. So what type of path should I use as a value to this href attribute? When we were linking to an HTML file which was included in my project folder, I was able to use a relative path. However, as this page is external to my site, using file path syntax that is relative to my project folder isn't going to work. Instead, I need to use an absolute path here. So to do that, I can just copy and paste the URL to this site into the, into the href attribute. So the URL to our site is now the value to the href attribute. And now when I save and go back to our page, we should see that uh, this, this heading has become an anchor. And when I click on it, it links, it links us back to the webcomic. However, I want this to open up in its own tab. So I can use the target attribute for that. I'm just going to include that attribute within the anchor tag. Uh, underscore blank is the value for that attribute which will cause the page to open in its own tab. So now when I click we see that the webcomic opens up in its very own tab. Okay everyone, that's all I got. I hope that this video helped to solidify your learning. Please remember to check out the additional resources for this video and thank you for your time.